welcome to this week's garden video. I'm feeling very giddy and very excited because I've just been to the garden centre and for the first time, I know it's September now, but I got the autumn vibe. <laughs> and I don't wanna, September I feel like it's still kind of like a summery-ish kind of month, but it does start to change here in Ireland. And I've already noticed that the evening is getting a little bit darker and the morning as well. So changes are coming. But went to the garden center and I have a wheelbarrow full of a couple of autumn plants, just things to give me a little bit of color. So I want to just, some of me dahlias are looking a bit miserable from the bit of the drought and I'm gonna put these in pots because um, in front of the greenhouse, which I'll show you, I move around the pots and it's my focal point. So when I'm in the kitchen and I look out, that's what I see. So I'm going to put some autumnal plants um, in there. And also these are autumnal for like, I'm growing zone, I think eight, nine, quite like mildish. Um, so if you are somewhere where it gets cold really quickly, the likes of the chrysanthemums, I can never say that word, they're not frost hardy. So I'll show you what I have, but also just bear in mind that your growing zone might be different and they might die quicker. So just to give you the heads up. As usual, sleeping blondie in the dahlia bed. Are you well today? Are you asleep? Yeah, she's uh, having a snoozy. No if this doesn't make you happy. I don't know what will. <laughs> so this is what I picked up and I just want to, I think I still have color in front of the greenhouse. So we have the strawberries, apple tree, um, tomatoes, still going there, grand. And then I just have some dahlias, but I just want to tidy this up and put some color. So I'm gonna make, I do have some buckets at my front door as well. So here is what I got. I got some Irish heathers, um, autumn flowering heathers, and I think these will also flower in springtime as well. And they are great for bees. So pollinators, great for bees, especially at times during winter when, or autumn, when stuff is kinda, oh, on the turn. I got two mums, chrysanthemums. Now, I went for this kind of colour palette. It's not really an autumnal colour palette because I still like, you know, the pinks and stuff, but I could, I suppose I could throw in like an orange and a yellow. That's kind of what you think of for autumn, isn't it? So I got two of these. I'm gonna pop them in buckets. Got some um, trailing ivy. I got two different varieties. I got some cyclamen. Now I do have some of this cyclamen growing wild. When I say wild, it's just kind of spread in the front. One thing I will say about these is do not leave them sitting in a soggy pot. They absolutely hate too much rain. And then, oh, I love now ornamental cabbage. <laughs> love when nothing says autumn than an ornamental cabbage. Now the only thing I'll say about these is they bolt up. So I pop them like in a container or something and then they just, they're nice to look at but they, yeah, they, they shoot up or something. I don't know how to describe it. Like come spring, it just be like really tall. And some more heathers. And then I got some winter pansies. A little bit of squash out there, violas actually. And I have pansies here. I think they were like three for something. I need to take these out, hang on. Yeah, some winter pansies. So I think I'm gonna make, I got some extra buckets. I do have some pots. And I think I'm going to like, obviously your dahlias will keep flowering until like obviously you have to take them in, they're not frost hardy, you do have to cut them back and take them inside the tuber. Um, but like, I'm hoping this will keep me going to like November. Again, it's mild. Here, we probably won't get, we didn't get much frost actually last year, but that's why I'm putting them in containers because if there is gonna be a harsh frost, they can go straight on the floor in there and they're okay. So that is, that's my little autumn haul. Blondie is looking <laughs> not interested. And the likes of your dahlias, they make me so happy. Keep deadheading them and they'll keep going until the frost. It's obviously gonna be different depending on your location. My only fear is we had the droughty kind of summer. Is it gonna be like, bam, here's some frost for you. You just can't predict the weather. But anyway, enough about the weather. Enough about the weather. I picked the wrong day to wear white, didn't I? I'm gonna get some compost and I'm gonna pot these up. And I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna mix um like a bit, I'll show you like a bit of ivy, bit of um violas and pansies, cabbage, and I'm gonna try, I'm not the best when it comes to making 
like buckets and stuff, I took a picture of, do you know the ready-made pretty pots that are in the garden center? I took a picture of one to copy it. <laughs> What's it, Monty Don says? You have a filler, a spiller, and a thriller, or did I get that wrong? A filler, a spiller, and then something for height when you're making up a container. But I'm just gonna copy the picture that I took of the one that was in the garden centre. Fake it till you make. And I just say, <laughs> I'm quite impressed. Especially them two with the ivy. Now I'd give you 20 euro for that in the shop. <laughs> the mums could have probably gotten away with smaller pots, uh, but they'll grow into it. And I just did one pansies, one viola. They, I packed them in tightly because they don't grow as much in winter as they do. Like in summer, they're like an autumn variety. But yeah, that's looking good. Now, I do have some bits left over and I have this pot that was at the front door. That plant, it's still alive. I did have cosmos in it, but all the cosmos died because I guess you forgot to water it. <laughs> Me. So I'm gonna stick my cabbage and whatever's left in this wheelbarrow into this pot and then I'll keep it here where I can see it. And then I will take away some of the pots here and play around with this area and try and make it, sorry I zoom out, nice. I brought over eucalyptus because I think eucalyptus is evergreen. So if I can even have that here for a bit of height, maybe move the little um, wishing well over and then have some pots around the front and then at least this section looks tidy and gives me joy.
had a little cheeky lunch there. It's probably on my face. I am delighted with my little section over there. Does my microphone pick up on the noise of chickens? I think one of my neighbors has chickens. Now I know Tommy definitely has chickens, but he's the other side of the road. But I can hear them as if they're like right there. Anyway, as much as I am in love with this section here, I want to show you my front border. It's like, first of all, it's good because I've learned lessons and I now know that that soil dries out much quicker than out the back, but there's lots of things I need to change. So I want to show you my, <laughs> it was doing so well. If you look back at my previous garden videos, especially like July time, the geraniums were nice and full and in color. Everything did so well. It looks lovely in spring, but late summer, autumn, it's just gone to crisp. So I will show you my not so good. That's pretty, this isn't. It's a little bit windy as well, so I'm hoping my microphone, maybe if I stand in, won't pick it up too much. So this was looking so good for most of the season, but I think the dry weather, maybe, and, yeah, my mission for this year was to add height to this, um, like, run. Oh, sorry if that wind, I really hope the wind isn't getting picked up. Add height, so I did add, uh, that's an evergreen clematis, I think it's winter beauty. And then I have another evergreen one here, that's another climber. This is the shady part. While it's shady, I noticed that the soil did dry out. Now I know that was kind of like we didn't get a lot of rain, so I think I'm gonna add some more shady evergreen kind of plants here. I'm gonna take out this hydrangea Annabelle. I put this in last year. The two hydrangeas that I have out the back are in pots and they do quite well. So I'm gonna take this out. Draining was good. It's actually coming back after cutting it. Have a GM. These Rebecca's didn't grow at all and I'm thinking it was because of the lack of the lack of water. They literally went as high as here and like last year these would have been up high so could have been the lack of water for them. All the roses are fine and this was looking so lovely but what I'm going to do is the two hydrangea annabelles that are looking more miserable as the weeks go on when maybe the end of September when the soil is a bit more moist and there has been more rain and it's cooler I'm going to move the two hydrangea annabelles up here. And I'm going to stick in two climbing roses and then I'm going to divide this um, geranium over here, the pink one, because if I show you out the back, if we come out the back, I've noticed that that geranium has just flowered forever and that's it here. So I'm thinking if I can divide loads more of this and stick it into the front side borders that when things start to die off this was just a little cracker of a plant and also this Brunnera was one of my favourites this year as well so I think I might do a group of Brunnera outside the front door in the shady section. I think it would be, be nice. I'm so sorry about the wind. I really hope that my microphone didn't pick up all that in your ear. If it did a little bit, I'm sorry. I'd love to know what was your garden lesson. And actually that's one thing. I don't know if it was Monty Dawn or if it was Adam Frost or one of the experts. Could have been Carol Klein. I love watching her too. And basically they had said, watch your garden before doing anything. And one thing I've learned this year is from watching that front border that, you know, I got it right some of the time, just not all of the time. I now know which spot gets a lot of sunshine. So even though there might be a couple of meters between it, one corner is getting way more sunshine and the soil is drier than the other end. So I'm hoping the plants that I put in, I'm just, you know what, I'm just watering them. I'm just feeding them. I'm not looking for flowers off them. I'm hoping next year they'll just be nice. I definitely planted in that border too late in the season when it was dry. Lesson learned. <laughs> this is again, how I garden, not how to garden. <laughs> if you want to learn how to garden, watch Monty Don. Every Friday, eight o'clock. Anyway, yeah, so I was feeling a bit 
filming Merp in last week's garden video because I was feeling like overwhelmed and like things were dying but I'm feeling better this week because like that just go to the garden centre and get yourself some pots <laughs> and at least one section looks nice so the front might be looking crispy and scaldy but at least this is looking nice outside and everything's gonna die off soon well not soon but come November like if you look at last year's garden videos everything dies back and we start again. So mother nature, I do like how she lets us fix our mistakes, is it? I don't know, everything just dies and comes back. So it's like, what I'm trying to say is you get a blank canvas, Bob Ross, blank canvas, happy little trees, and the next year's another year. But anyway, I'd love to know, do you add any kind of autumn color bits? What has been your lesson? in your garden and also when I say your garden you could be a container gardener you could be like growing out like on a balcony gardener and um, whatever size garden I'd love to know your le your lessons and it also helps I see when I look at comments the comment section like people getting advice so when you share something sometimes I might miss it but it's really helpful sharing your like tips and stuff to the community because then other people um, and also people from different growing zones I sometimes see people from like Australia commenting and then fellow Australians commenting with each other as well so I love to see that interaction because we're a community I am going to leave it there for this video I'm gonna have a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, cup of tea and I don't need to cut the grass because I cut it last night. You know me, love cutting grass. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, I will leave a link uh, playlist thingy to the Cottage Garden playlist. Uh, videos Thursday and Sunday. Make sure to subscribe for my regulars. Cheeky thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one.